find somebody to lay hands on and cast something out. You're dreaming about casting out devils, healing the sick and raising the dead. Others want to talk about their golf score. You want to talk about the glory of God. Satan, you will obey the word of the resurrected Lord. In the name of Jesus, we command you, loose your hold upon these people. Loose your hold upon their minds. Now, we've been talking in the last lesson about holiness. We've been talking about righteousness. And now that we're in the fourth session or on, on dealing with the specific tools of the armors of God, we're going to pick this up. We talked about last lesson, how holiness protects us. And then we begun to deal with the fact that holiness empowers us. We just read in last lesson, Romans chapter 1, verse 4. And declared to be the Son of God with power, according, Jesus was declared to be the Son of God with power, according to the Spirit of holiness, by the resurrection from the dead. That Jesus was declared to be the Son of God with power, in accordance with the Spirit of holiness. That holiness empowers us with the very power of God, the very nature of God. Look at Matthew chapter 5, verse 6. Blessed, God says, are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. We got all these people saying, oh, I go to a meeting to get filled. Oh, get hands laid on me. Oh, Benny throws his cloth on me. Oh, this one filled me with oil, pulled a gown of oil on my head. Oh, I got filled with the Holy Ghost. But by the time they got out the back door, they done leaked all over the place. Why? Because they're not living a righteous life. But God says, if you're hungry for righteousness, if you're hungry for holiness, if you're pursuing it and thirsting and hungry for righteousness and holy, come on, church. How can you be honest? How many of us are honestly being hungry to be righteous? How many of us are hungry and thirsting for holiness. You know what most people in the church today, or many, excuse me, but many people in the church today are doing? They're hungry and thirsting for the blessings. They're hungry and thirsting for power. They're hungry and thirsting for riches. They're hungry and thirsting for, for all these other things. But God says if you hunger and thirst for righteousness, for holiness, that's what's going to release the power. That's what's going to cause you to become filled with my spirit. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. We got a long way to go. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things shall be added to you. Look what God says. Now the context there, he's talking about the stuff. He said, don't worry about what you'll eat. Don't worry about where you're going to sleep. Don't worry about the food. Don't worry about the clothing. Don't worry about the roof over your head. The, the necessity, what he's dealing with is the necessities of life. He said, you don't need to seek those things. He said, your father knows that you need those things. You seek holiness. You seek righteousness. And the father's going to make sure that all these things are added unto you. My God. Now, hear me. Church, I teach strongly on giving and receiving. I believe powerfully on sowing. I live a lifestyle of sowing and sowing aggressively and sowing big seeds and sowing for breakthroughs. But let me tell you something. You don't sow to get your basic needs met. Boy, I just got a bunch of preachers who've been telling you that because they wanted to get more money out of you. Oh, you need a break. You need money. You know, you need your needs met. Give an offering. That's not what the Bible says. He says, you want your needs met? Live righteous. You know why? <laughs> Listen to me too. And you know why we like the offering? We actually like the offering one because it's easier to try to get through a sacrifice of an offering what we're supposed to get through obedience of righteousness. But God says obedience is better than sacrifice. I want the obedience. The sacrifice didn't impress me. It's the obedience. Seek ye first the righteousness of God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Now look at this. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 10 and 11. From the Amplified. Because holiness empowers us. When it goes well with the uncompromisingly righteous, 
the city rejoices. But when the wicked perish, there are shouts of joy. By the blessing of the influence of the upright and God's favor, because of them, the city is exalted, but it is overthrown by the mouth of the wicked. What is God saying? He said, when the righteous are living righteous, when the godly are living godly, when his people are pursuing holiness, then everybody even in the city prospers. Come on, that lines up with the famous uh, prayer scripture. If my people which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways. Seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. What? Turn from their, who's going to turn from their wicked ways? The righteous have to turn from their wicked ways. Now, let me put this in your spirit. Part of the problem we're having today, guys, one of the reasons there's so much judgment and one of the reasons we're wrestling. Yes, Holy Ghost. One of the reasons we're wrestling with what we are in America. One of the reasons we've got the crime rates that are some of the highest in the world. Murder rates that are some of the highest in the world. Drug rates that are the highest in the world. And the promiscuity that we have in America. Even though we have more churches here and we have a higher percentage of people going to church than almost any nation in the world. One of the reasons we're battling is because God's people are the ones living wicked. If God's people would live righteous, if God's people would pursue holiness, God would hear from heaven. God would forgive our sins and God would heal our land. If you go back, that's 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. You go back to verse 13. God says, if I... God, shut up the heavens that there be no rain. If I send all kinds of pestilence and plagues upon the land, if I send locusts to devour the land, then if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray. God's saying, I've sent a judgment to the land. I've sent these things to, I've allowed these things to come on the land because my people, you say, I don't believe God will do that. Well, you need to talk to Jonah. All those poor innocent guys in the boat, They weren't doing anything wrong, but they suffered the storm because Jonah was in rebellion. And I'm telling you in the name of Jesus, hear me, there's some young people listening to me right now. One of the reasons some of your schools are a mess is because God's children in those schools, God's servants, whether teachers or students, are not living righteous, are not preaching truth, are not standing for holiness. And judgment has fallen on the school because of God's people that are in rebellion. Because see, righteousness has the power to turn it all around in the city. God will bless the city. The power of a few righteous to rescue a city from wickedness. Remember the story with Lot and Sodom and Gomorrah? And here, two angels and the Lord appeared to Abraham on the way to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Had a conversation with Abraham and Abraham... God stayed with him and the two angels went on to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. And God spoke to Abraham and told him what he was going to do. And Abraham began to plead and said, if there's there's just 50 righteous, will you spare it? God said, yes. Abraham said, forgive me for for asking this, but how about five less? If there's 45, will you spare it? God said, yes. He said, well, what what about 40? God said, what about 30? God said, what about 20? God said, yes. He said, what about 10? God said, yes. You know why? The cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, they believe, had over 200,000 people attending. And God was willing to spare 200,000 wicked people from judgment for the, because of 10, just 10 righteous. You know why? Because 10 righteous people pursuing righteousness, pursuing holiness, living righteous, and preaching righteousness. We'll get to that in a few lessons. 10 people could turn a whole city of 200,000 away from their wickedness and back to God. But God couldn't even find 10. He couldn't even find 10. Holiness is powerful. It's why the devil fights it. It's why the devil wants to shame you by if you pursue holiness, if you preach holiness, he wants to call you legalistic. But I'm, we're God through, this, through, through these meetings, through these uh, discipleship courses, has given you revelation to stand up against that assault because now you understand what legalism is. He wants to call you religious. But see, I saw a vision. I was in a church of a famous minister who was living an unholy lifestyle, but I did not know it. No, I know what I've ever thought it. And I was standing in the church. I remember what I told you earlier, that God gives prophets eyes to see that others do not see. It's kind of like the old ships. 
You know, when an old ship was crossing the sea, there would be one guy way up top in what's called the crow's nest. And from that vantage point up there, he could see things that others could not see because of his vantage point. He would see dangers and he would see clear paths. And he would call down to those below, land ho, coral reef, ship, whatever, turn this way, turn that way. And the guys down below who could not see what he saw had to heed his voice. If they didn't heed what he saw, hear me, if they didn't heed what he saw, they could get in serious trouble or miss a serious blessing if they didn't listen to the voice. Well, God has put prophets up in the crow's nest and he's given them eyes to see what others cannot see and to declare to the servants of God, declare to the people of God what's coming, what's happening around. To declare, to speak, to speak, to warn. Somebody said the devil's a liar. Shakara, I just, I've got to move on. I was going to go into something, but I've got to move on. Holiness, it literally means holy unto the Lord. It literally means holy completely unto God. I want you to go to John chapter 17, verse 22 for a moment. John chapter 17, verse 22. Shokara masata chashande. Mokora masata tande. Jesus said, he started in verse 21. I'm sorry, verse 23. He started in verse 21. He said that they all may be one as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And the glory which thou gavest me I have given them, that they may be one even as we are one. I in them and thou in me, that they may be made perfect. Akaramasatande. I've got to, I had to skip the last thing because I've got to get into this. That they may be made perfect. God, can you say that word perfect? That they may be made perfect. God has called us to walk in a realm of Christ's likeness. We have been predestined by God to be conformed into his existence. Exact image, his exact likeness. Scriptures say the standard, and the height of Christ's own perfection. He's called us to walk in that. He's called us to be just like him. People say it's not possible. It's not possible that we can walk like Jesus. And I'm here to tell you in the name of Jesus, not only is it possible, but God has made the way and is going to pour out an end time manifestation of the spirit of holiness to empower his... I saw it in a vision, church. I saw four angels. And the first angel that appeared to me had a banner down his front and it said purity. He had in this hand a shield, the shield of faith. We're going to talk about that next lesson. And he had in this hand a sword. And he said, the shield has been given to protect my people's minds from the vile thoughts of the enemy. And the sword is to pierce their hearts with the deepest of conviction. And the Lord spoke to me. The angel of the Lord spoke to me. And he said, he has come to bring holiness back to the church. I'm prophesying to you in the name of Jesus. God is about to release the spirit of holiness like was on Christ. That he was declared to be the son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness. God is going to release the spirit of holiness back upon his people. It's going to initiate something. You see, God put inside of us an incredible element. He placed inside of us, when we got born again, an incredible supernatural element that will give us the ability to walk as Jesus. I want you to go to 1 John chapter 3, verse 9, a very powerful but Challenging scripture. Whoever has been born of God does not sin. 
For his seed, put that in your spirit, for his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he has been born of God. He said, now watch what he says. Whoever's been born of God does not sin. Now we covered that back in the earlier part of the discipleship course. We covered how he says, whoever born of God does not habitually, knowingly, deliberately continue to practice rejecting God's legal right of authority. But why? Because his, God's seed remains in him. 1 Peter 1.23, watch this. Having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. Look what he says. Having him born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible. Now look at me carefully. Inside of a seed is all the genetic code. <laughs> this is so powerful. Inside of a seed is all the genetic code that is necessary, all the information that is necessary to reproduce an exact duplicate of the original. I'm going to say that again. Inside of a seed is all of the genetic code, all of the vital information, everything that is needed to reproduce an exact duplicate of the original. Inside, we have these beautiful oak trees in my backyard. They produce acorns. Inside of that acorn, which is a very large seed, is all of the genetic code, all of the information needed to produce an exact duplicate of the original, another southern red oak. An exact duplicate or Schumann oak, I believe it is, but another oak tree, an exact duplicate of the original. Now God says, I have put inside of you the seed of my son. And in the seed that I put in you is all the information, all the spiritual genetic code to reproduce inside of you an exact duplicate of the original. We have been predestined by God to be conformed into His image. How are we going to get there? God put His seed inside of us. The divine seed, the divine sperm, it says. He put it inside of us. And all the genetic code, all the spiritual information that's needed to reproduce us after the image of God, which is the image of holiness, which is the image of righteousness. All that is already in us right now. It's 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 inside of us right now. The image of God, the seed of holiness, the seed of righteousness is inside of the spirit of every born again believer. Woo! Now look at this. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 22. We've got a long way to go, quickly. Watch what he says. That you put off concerning the former conduct, the old man, which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit, there it is, of your mind. Remember the armor of God, the battlefront of the mind? The renewed in the spirit of the mind that you put on the new man, which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. He says, you now have the authority. You now have access. You now have the right to put on the righteousness the holiness, the true nature of God, the new man. You got to put off the old man through the renewing of the spirit of the mind. You got to go into this realm of spiritual warfare through the armor of God and allow the righteousness of God, the holiness of God to penetrate your mind, to cleanse your mind, to purify your mind, to renew you in the spirit of your mind. 
so you could take on the nature of God. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin, that we might become the righteousness of God. Stop telling me you can't live holy. Stop telling me you can't live righteous. Jesus, who knew no sin, was made to be sin, that we might, not just ethereally, not just in some mystical positional stature out there, but literally, we might take on the equity of the character, the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. God is going to release a new level of the spirit of holiness upon the church and we are going to come. You know how I know he says it, that he's coming back for a church that's without spot, that's without blemish. My Father God church, he's coming back for a church that's holy. <laughs> but in order, watch this, watch this. I got to take you here in the next few minutes. Father, I give you praise. In order for this seed that's on the inside of us, the seed that things have been born in us to grow, something has got to happen. Look at John 12, 24. He says this, Most assuredly I say to you, unless the grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much Grain. He says, how is the seed that's born inside of every believer? How is the seed that's placed inside every believer? The seed that's in the nature and image of Christ. How is that thing going to break forth? How is that thing? Come on, are you with me? Come on. How is that thing going to break forth? You've got to die. You've got to die to your will. You've got to die to your ways. You've got to die to your attitudes. You've got to die to self. When you die to self, come on, didn't John the Baptist say, I must decrease. Why? So that he can increase. Oh, my father. Luke chapter 9, verse 23. Then he said to them all, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself. Take up his cross Daily and follow me. Galatians 2.20 I have been crucified with Christ. As a result, it's no longer I who live. But Christ lives in me. Look at that. I've now been crucified so that it's given room for the seed to grow up and mature. It's given room for the seed of Christ to take over. So now it's no longer I who live, but it's Christ who lives in me. Why? Because I first died. Because I first died. Could this all tie together when he says that we are to be slaves of righteousness? We're to die to our own ways, our own wills, our own desires. We're to die to our worldly flesh. We're to die to the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. We're to die to those things. He's given us the power to die. He's given us power. Let me take you just a little farther. Let me take you just a little farther. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. He said, that's, 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 that's reasonable. That's just, that's just what, that's what should be expected, that you lay down your life as a living sacrifice. Verse 2, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed. Here it is again. By the renewing of your mind that you may prove that your life may be an evidence of what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. That word transform there comes from the Greek word metamorpho. It's where we get the word metamorphosis from. It literally means to be made to, to, totally transformed. <laughs> Stay with me here. This is so powerful, guys. Stay with me. Watch me. This is powerful. 
A metamorphosis is when inside, see, when a caterpillar goes through into the cocoon and comes out, metamorphosizes the butterfly. The butterfly is not just a skinny caterpillar with wings. Every, when that caterpillar goes in, everything that caterpillar was ceases to exist. The heart ceases to exist. It, the, caterpillar, the caterpillar brain ceases to exist. The pat, caterpillar circulatory system ceases to exist. Everything ceases to exist. And the genetic code that's inside of that caterpillar takes over and a whole new creation comes forth. <laughs> God says, if any man is in Christ Jesus, he is a new creation. In the metamorphosis process, I got out my Sunday. In the metamorphosis process, the butterfly has a new heart. The butterfly has a new brain. The butterfly has a new circulatory system. The butterfly has new everything. Did not Jesus say, I will give you a new heart? Did not Jesus say, this, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus? We are being made totally brand new. A metamorphosis process as we behold him in his glory. As we gaze upon him in his wonder. As we look upon Jesus, as we come pursue holiness, because without holiness, you will not see him. Without holiness, no man will see the Lord. But 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18 says, and all of us with an unveiled face, because we continue to behold in the word of God, as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord. We are being metamorphosized, transformed, changed into his image from one degree of glory to another. As we pursue holiness, as we pursue righteousness, God will open our eyes to see Jesus. And as we see Jesus, we are transformed more and more into his, his image. We take on more and more of his nature. We take on more and more of his holiness. And as we walk in that greater degree of holiness, he opens our eyes more. Then we see more of him. Then we take on more of his nature. And as we walk in that greater nature, he opens our eyes more. It's a progressive glory to glory, glory to to glory, glory to glory, where we are going to be changed into the image of God. We're going to take on his nature. We're going to walk in the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Holiness will be the banner upon which the end time army marches under. Holy unto the Lord. Take on the whole armor of God. Don't you Dare go out and try to fight the devil without being passionate in pursuing the righteousness and holiness of God. Haramoshaka. Put these last verses in your heart. 1 Peter 1, 15 and 16. But as he who has called you is holy, you will also be holy in all your conduct because it is written, be holy for I am holy. Be holy, for I am holy. It's a command. Walk in it. And as you walk in it, that and only then, then and only then, have you put on the breastplate of righteousness. We'll see you next lesson. <laughs>